Well, boys and girls, I am excited. And of course, you may ask Tyler, why are you so excited? Well, because it finally got cold. And not really might pique your interest. You're thinking, Tyler, you want it to get cold? The answer to that question is actually yes. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the topic of cold fronts and how cold fronts actually affect bass fishing sometimes in a positive way. So I'm gonna have a kind of two-part series on cold fronts, minor cold fronts where it drops from, I don't know, 80 degrees to 50 degrees, and then the major cold fronts where it gets super frigid, you got snow and ice on the ground. So just enough cold weather to put on pants and a sweatshirt, but also enough cold weather to get these fish up here finally on the chew. My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome to Tyler's Real Fishing. Let's talk about it. All right, so what are cold fronts exactly? Well, cold fronts, of course, are a front of weather that is cold. So usually cold fronts actually not sure if it's usually, I think it's all the time. Cold fronts come from the north to the south. So you have a northern, oh, one sec, just saw a fish chase me. And with that wind comes colder weather, which usually brings colder water temps. And of course, after that front comes high pressure. So a lot of things that uh, can trigger fish to not eat lures <laughs> very well. Now these changing weather conditions do not automatically uh, dictate the bass not eating anything at all it just oftentimes changes the way that you have to target them. Like you can't throw the exact same lures, have the exact same pattern right after a cold front or during a cold front as you had before it. The fish are going to change a little bit. And so I'm gonna make this, this cold front series kind of a two part series where I try to explain the best that I can the two types of cold fronts. Cause I mean, let's be honest, the one that we had last night, it was cold, it's a 30 degree drop, but it's not nearly as bad as it could be. Uh, let's say a cold front from 55 degrees to 18 degrees. So those cold fronts exist and those are a lot more detrimental on your fishing success than the one that I'm in right now. So today's gonna be kind of a, a minor cold front per se. And then we're gonna cover later on this, uh, this fall and winter in Texas, some of the more severe cold fronts. There's one. Oh gosh, what the heck is it? Got a drop shot as my follow-up lure. See if he'll eat that bad boy. So one thing I know for sure about cold fronts is that it kind of psychs out the bass's minds a little bit and gets them to want to suck tight to cover. So whether it's lay down trees, dock posts, bridge pilings, you know, little clumps of grass uh, along the bank. Bass feel the need to suck up tightly to that cover because it uh, not only allows an ambush point for them to feed uh, in a time when a lot of things are slowing down, uh, but it also provides warmth for them. So, you know, dock posts, lay down logs, even pieces of grass, those will retain some of the heat that was available before the cold front, which now, of course, that the cold front is here, uh, everything else is cold around them. So if they wanna, if they wanna be warm at all, they're gonna suck tight to that cover. So I'm gonna keep flipping for a little bit, got two bites. Feels good to get some bites early on, on a cold front morning. And uh, if I don't get any success here, I'm gonna go skip some docks. I might throw a frog here. I'm just gonna try out a few different things. Like I said, this is a minor cold front. This is not a major cold front. So these fish are not gonna be probably drop shot eaters, I'm guessing. They're just gonna want something presented a little bit slower and probably a little bit more tight to cover. It's also occurring to me that maybe the fishing isn't even that good at this lake. Possibility. So we have totally moved lakes. Uh, there's a river that connects these two lakes here in Minnesota. So I'm in the second lake, a lot deeper, more better contour lines and a little bit dingier water, but that doesn't really scare me at all. Um, water temp is, what's the water temp here? 67. So the um, dirtier water actually kept it a bit warmer. So I'm gonna go back to skipping docks. These docks are a little more, they look deeper at least. They don't have as much grass around them, at least from the looking of them right now. So we'll see when we get up there. Just gotta keep trying stuff, man. Ideally, if, I, if let's say I have clear water, I would find a rock pile and I would drag a shaky head, a drop shot, anything more finesse that can really coerce those fish to bite. But in this scenario, it's just, I, I got shallow lakes and 
dirty water and that's just not really a tactic that would work. So, I mean, I could sit down and tell you guys all about cold fronts and all about uh, lures to throw in them, but I couldn't actually do most of that on my lake today. I've just got to keep flipping and frogging, hoping that I can find a little patch of fish and get one to bite and then really slow down, pick apart an area and see if I can get more of them. But cold fronts are just funky like that. They, they will totally throw a wrench in, in the patterns you had. And the best thing to do is to slow down and really pick apart your areas. Oh, sorry, didn't see you there. I apologize. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm sorry, you were behind your boat. I did not see you there. I apologize, sir. I know, I know I did. I was, you were behind your boat. I couldn't see you. I'm so sorry, I, I, I could not see you. <laughs> really sorry about that. Oh, that was crazy. Come on, right there. There's one. Oh gosh, dang it. Finally, a deeper dock with not much grass and there was a fish. Now which way should I go, this way? Yeah. That's another thing about cold front bass. They really have a hard time keeping a lure in their mouth. They are very much hit it and quit it sort of bass where they will hit your lure, take it up real quick, drop it. And by the time you go to set the hook, they are not there anymore. So you gotta watch out for that as well. Gotta really be careful to know they have the hook before you set it. Oh gosh, I had a stinking fish the whole time. Are you kidding me? Is that a muskie? Got him, whatever that is. I've got him. What is it? Oh, is that a muskie? That was a muskie. What the heck? Good grief. I'm pretty sure it was a muskie. Wow, this is, this is a funky day, y'all. A very blonde musky. Here's one. What is this? There's a largemouth bass, finally. Gosh, as I just told y'all, these two docks looked really juicy. Finally, got one. Whew. Took a while, but the PB&J Outcast Tackle Cage Fighter Jig got him. That's a, that's a healthy, chunky fish. I mean, like, proportions-wise, that's great, but, well, you know what, we got a fish. Let's expand on that. The only fish we have on the boat so far is a dock fish. And I know that fish, like I told you guys all video, they suck up against cover. And docks is one of those things that they might not bite as well as they did the day before, but I think a dock bite is still on after a cold front. So, let's keep going, skip a few more docks and see what we can do. Come on. Scratch that. Scratch what I had said. There's one. Yes. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. I knew that these docks would be better. They're a little bit deeper. They don't have as much grass under them. They still have some grass, but not too much. And that's a nice one. That's not a bad little bass right there. Hello, buddy. How you doing? What's going on? That's a nice one. Holy cow. Oh, that right there feels good to have, have struggled all day, finally figured out that they are in fact on the docks, the bass are on the docks, and uh, pinpointing exactly which ones and making it happen, that makes you feel good at the end of the day. We're putting these in the live well for some pictures. This video has been a range of emotions, trying to figure out these cold front fish. And again, in your situation, docks might not be the way to go. Maybe it is throwing a shaky head or a jig worm on a grass line. Maybe it is throwing a drop shot on bridge pilings. I tried all that and it didn't work, so. I'm going to what works for me, which is the docks. There's one. Gosh. That's a nice one too. That's not a bad one either. That one that one bit really weird. Oh gosh. He's in the trolling motor. He's in the trolling motor. Chill. Chill, get off of there, thank you. Oh gosh, oh that's huge. Oh that's big, oh that's big. Wow, 
Well, am I good to boat flip this thing? No, nah, I'm not gonna risk it because he just got me in the trolling motor. I don't wanna make my line is frayed. The big Minnesota largemouth bass right here. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Yes! Oh my gosh, look at that thing. Holy smokes. That does not look like a Minnesota largemouth. That looks like a Texas largemouth. Besides the fact that it's a lot thicker. Wow, I gotta get a picture of that one. Oof. Oof da. Wow, that could go almost five pounds. Gosh, and he was not coming off. Let me tell you something. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yes, let's keep it going. One thing that's happening, like as I'm fishing right now, it's getting colder. Like my, I'm having more trouble saying coherent words out of my mouth. My mouth's getting colder and uh, my legs definitely feel colder than they did. So the cold front is still coming in right now, which I think is gonna keep forcing these fish onto this standing cover. If you're gonna, if, if you got a cold front rolling through and you wanna make sure that you're getting big bites, a jig is the way to go. And there is, there's honestly no comparison. And one other thing I noticed about these fish is that both of them were on that horizontal post on the farthest outside portion of the dock. So sometimes you're gonna have fish that suck all the way to the bank. These fish are on the very edge, which is pretty standard for cold front. They wanna be pretty close to deep water, but still on the hard piece of structure. That's why I tried out the main river uh, laydowns earlier, because those are sitting in a similar situation as, uh, as these dock posts are. They are both on the outside portion of the uh, the larger piece of cover. There he is. Yes, sir. Gosh, my hand slipped. I knew there'd be one under there. This one doesn't look as big as the last one, but no, it's not. It's still a nice fish, though. Their proportions in here are crazy. Come on, come on. There we go. Look at how fat he is. That's crazy. This thing is an absolute tub. <laughs> that merits a picture, too. Fatty McGee, man. Look at that thing. Look at the proportions. Alrighty, see you, bud. Gosh, that thing, oh, I should have weighed it. That was like probably almost two pounds and he's no more than 13 inches. Gosh, that's crazy. Oh, well folks, that was a, uh, a complicated day. Cold fronts can be one of the toughest situations to catch fish in. And as you can tell by my, my, my I'm having trouble talking my normal speed. So for all you guys that comment that I should talk slower, maybe uh, I should fish in the cold more and I actually would be forced to talk slower. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, and learned something about cold fronts. Again, just kind of a recap, cold fronts rapidly cool down your bodies of water that you fish on. And so you have to target those fish in a different way than you did before the cold front hit and uh, I'll do a video on post frontal conditions so once you have the cold front blow through you don't have clouds and low pressure as we have today you've got high pressure what exactly to do in those scenarios and I'll go to a completely different type of lake might even hit up Mille Lacs for deep smallmouth bass something like that I want to hit up a different area to show you guys that might have more clear water deep rocky lakes how to deal with cold fronts for you guys so if you enjoyed hit that subscribe button I'm so excited to uh, take you guys on my adventures these next few weeks probably gonna film 15 or so videos when I'm up here. So really, really excited, but uh, we'll see y'all next time on TRF.